QuickBooks Desktop 2023, change account categorization to other expense. Let's do it with Intuit QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice Problem, which we started up in a prior presentation, going through the setup process we do every time, maximizing the homepage to the gray area. Noting in the view dropdown, we got the hide icon bar, open windows list checked off, open windows open on the left hand side. Go into the reports dropdown, company and financial, let's open up the profit and loss. Change the range up top from 010123 to 123. Customize the report, fonts, and the numbers. Changing the font on up a bit to 14. Okay, yes, and okay. Go into the report drop down again. Company and financial, this time the balance sheet. Customizing the report, changing the range 010123 to 123 and then we'll fonts and number it changing the font on up to 14 okay yes and okay there's the normal setup process we do every time now we're going to be focusing in on the profit and loss so we're in the p and l income statement profit and loss we're focusing specifically on the interest expense and we're going to be moving it from the expense category down here to other income and expenses. Just a recap on why we might want to do that on the income statement. The income statement or profit and loss in its simplest form, a single step income statement for example, would just have income minus expenses two categories. But typically in a multiple step income statement, we want to add some pit stops along the way. For example, cost of goods sold having its own category and then gross profit being income minus cost of goods sold because cost of goods sold is so significant. And then we have our large category of other expenses, basically operating expenses here. And that gets us down to the net ordinary income. Now, everything above this point is going to be stuff that we would say is involved in our normal operations would generally be the idea stuff that is not involved in our ordinary operations that we don't expect to be continuing on into the future we might want to put down here as we did with the gain on the sale of investments you'll recall that we had investments in stocks and bonds for example when we sold it we had a gain. We don't want to put the gain up here in income because it would have the same impact on the net income. But uh, really, we would like to have it down here because we're trying to tell ourselves and readers that this isn't part of our normal income. We don't expect that to happen in the future. Now, you can have a similar argument. You know, there's pros and cons to putting the interest in the expense category because the interest is not really part of our normal operations either. If we had the funding, in other words, if we didn't have to finance with a loan, we wouldn't have interest expense. It's only there because of the financing. So you could argue, well, you need the financing. The interest is gonna be somewhat consistent. You're gonna compare it from month to month, so you should keep it in the expense category. Or you can argue, well, I don't think it's part of my normal operating expenses if I had the financing and therefore I'm gonna put it down here so I can see it separately from my net ordinary income. So that's gonna be the general idea. So now we'll just get into the logistics of how you would move that. We could just go into the chart of accounts over here by going to the lists drop down, and then the chart of accounts. And notice we already have something recorded in there and we could still move it and have QuickBooks move all the transactions basically that are hitting that particular account. So we're in this expense category down below. I'm looking for interest expense. That's the one right there. That's the one. Let's edit it by right clicking on it and edit the account. So it's under the expense category. 
Now, the natural thing to do would put it would be to put it into other expenses down below. Other expenses. I, and let's say OK and see what it does. If I go to the profit and loss, now it's not in the expense category. It's down here into other. That means it gives us a, a net ordinary income before these other items, which basically aren't part of our normal operations. We've got the gains that we saw before and the interest expense. Now notice we've got we've got kind of two more categories down here. So this adds a lot of added uh, subtotals into our income statement because now we've got one account under other income, which has a header, the thing, and then the total, and then one account under other expenses. So there might be some accounts that you're that you're going to say uh, could could like the gain or loss account if it was unrealized gain or loss could be income. It could be increasing net income or it could be decreasing net income. So in other words, you might say, hey, look, I, I would rather shorten this up a little bit and maybe only have one uh, one of these two categories uh, instead of two of them. Basically, I would just like it to be other income slash expenses in one category without another subtotal of other income and other expenses. So I would like to have income then represented as increases down here. So net ordinary uh, income plus the increases minus the decreases, right? So in other words, I could set this expense up, expense account up as an other income account, which will pull it up to here and record it as a negative and make our income statement a little bit shorter without having to have two subtotal categories. Let me show you what I mean. If we go to the chart of accounts again, and I right click on the interest expense and we say we want to edit the account, edit the account we can say let's make it other income that seems unnatural because it's an expense account but it's going to be a negative other income account in that category down below so we're going to say yes and so let's go to profit and loss now the double entry accounting system still has to work out it's not like you're going to mess up net income because quickbooks is going to force the double entry accounting system to work we're still at the same net income but now we've only got this one other category so this subtotal isn't really giving us any more detail other income it's really other income slash expenses income represented with positive numbers expenses with negative numbers and there's our net subtotal so it's a little 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 bit off because of the name that it has here as other in this other subcategory but it gives you just one subcategory instead of two down below which is a quite common way to format it and it makes your income statement a little less gaudy or a little less long with all the stuff but, uh, and you can do that, so you can have that same principle if you had uh, unearned revenue might go to here. Any, anything that uh, you don't think is gonna be repetitive into the future, you might wanna put down in the other income and expense category, because when you do a comparative income statement comparing this month to the following month, then you don't wanna really be comparing things that you don't think are gonna be continuing on into the future. That's not gonna help you to project into the future and do your budgeting also note that as you move stuff if, if you move the entire account you can you can imagine doing that that same process uh, in other scenarios if you wanted to you know move an account from you know a short-term liability to a long-term liability for whatever reason if you had it miscategorized and whatnot uh, it's possible to do that you want to be careful with it but if it moves the entire account then it should still kind of remain in balance the thing that you want to be other thing you want to be aware of is that the profit and loss accounts are temporary accounts so they're gonna they're gonna roll in to the balance sheet so if you were to try to change a profit and loss account for example to a balance sheet account that would be a more dramatic move right because a balance sheet account is a permanent account profit and loss is a temporary account but if you're moving something within the profit and loss uh, or within the balance sheet then you can you can generally do that if you if you need to but you you know, just be, you know, want to kind of imagine what the consequences would be, but generally you should remain basically in balance. I'm going to bring it back to where it was. So we have right click on this again, edit it again. I'm, I'm going to bring it back to where it's an ex other expense. So now we're going to have an other income and other expense, the longer kind of income statement, more multiple steps in the multiple step income statement down below there's where we stand let's look at the trial balance as of now let's hit the drop down and just check our numbers we didn't change any numbers we just adjusted the order of them 
going from 010123 to 123. Let's customize it up top. Fonts and the numbers changing the font. Let's bring it up to 16 this time. 16, por favor. Okay, and then if we go down here, then there's the interest expenses down below. So you could check your numbers. The reason the trial balance puts it down below, even though we don't have any subcategories, is because the trial balance is still in order by, in essence, balance sheet on top of income statement. It's in order by the order of, a, of accounts. And so if there's anything off on the chart of accounts, you could drill down on it and check it out in that way. If it's out of order, that's then what we worked on this time because the interest expense, if you didn't make the change, might be out of order. And you can look at your chart of accounts to order the chart of accounts.